There's an opening there. There is some water coming out of there. Well, that's what that 1863 Yarmouth Herald article said. It said it was two flat rocks laid together like that, like almost like a triangle. Is it possible the Oak Island team has found corroborating evidence that Fred's theory was true? In their quest to unravel the mysteries of Oak Island, Rick Lagina and his team, including Billy Gerhardt, Gary Drayton and Jack Begley, set off on a fascinating journey to explore the Dunfield spoils left behind by Robert Dunfield's excavation efforts in 1965 with the goal of uncovering not only valuable items, but also crucial evidence to guide their future excavations at the Money Pit. The team dives into this neglected area armed with metal detectors and a deep sense of curiosity. Dunfield's extensive dig, though unsuccessful in finding the legendary treasure chest, left behind untouched volumes of soil, offering a unique opportunity for the team to search for overlooked artifacts and clues. Gary Drayton's discovery of a potentially ancient metal relic fuels their hopes of unearthing further treasures hidden amidst the Dunfield loot. As they sift through the earth, the team finds pieces of wood indicating the presence of structural materials from the original excavation including the significant timber that may shed light on the money pits layout amidst their excavations. Gary Drayton's uncovering of an iron-laden spike within the wood presents an interesting possibility of dating the timber and tracing the footsteps of the original money pit builders. The team's excitement mounts as they contemplate the significance of each discovery and its potential implications for solving the Oak Island mystery. Could that be a piece of the wall that Fred Nolan found? If we found the wall in the swamp, that'd be a major discovery. As they delicately excavate around the wooden artifacts, the crew reflects on the role these objects may play in unraveling the island's mysterious history. With each find, they edge closer to uncovering the secrets that have captivated treasure hunters for generations. The exploration of Oak Island continues to yield fascinating discoveries as Rick Lagina and his team delve into the mysteries hidden beneath its surface. Encouraged by past successes and armed with newfound optimism, they set off on a journey filled with anticipation and excitement. With a renewed focus on the significance of silver in the previous year's discoveries, the team eagerly sets out to investigate the Dunfield spoils, drive Ian Spooner's water sampling findings and the revelation of silver in the money pit area add to the excitement sparking hopes of uncovering further valuable artifacts as the team sifts through the soil they unearth fascinating clues that may provide insights into the construction of the money pit gary drayton's keen eye spots hand carved wood pieces among the debris hinting at intentional craftsmanship linked to the island's mysterious past further exploration reveals interesting artifacts including a cribbing spike and a chisel, each raising questions about their potential role in Oak Island's history. That's a big old iron fasten. That's what we're looking for. Speculation abounds as the team considers the possibility of connections to the mythical 90-foot stone and other carved stones discovered on the island. As they continue to probe the depths, the team encounters rich, clayish silt and hardwood, sparking speculation about the presence of hidden structures beneath the surface. With each discovery, the crew grows more convinced that they are on the brink of unlocking the secrets hidden beneath Oak Island soil. Rick Lagina's arrival underscores the significance of the team's findings, highlighting the importance of their ongoing exploration. As they share their results, the team eagerly anticipates the next phase of their investigation fueled by the thrill of discovery and the promise of unraveling Oak Island's enduring mysteries. The exploration of Oak Island continues to captivate as each discovery unveils new layers of mystery. The recent findings, including wood and metal objects found at specific depths, add another dimension to the mystery surrounding the island's hidden history. The crew's attention is drawn to the C1 cluster area, where the presence of wood and metal coupled with the lack of previous activity records fuel speculation about possible connections to the original money pit the discovery of a wooden tunnel dating back to 1488 along with a mystery metal object containing gold 
raises questions about the island's past and its potential ties to hidden treasures. Further analysis of the mysterious metal object using an X-ray fluorescence spectrometer reveals the presence of iron and gold, intensifying the mystery surrounding CD 4.5. With an X-ray fluorescence spectrometer, or XRF device, which can identify the types of elements and metals that make up an object's composition. As the team prepares for additional testing, the unexpected combination of wood, tunnels, and gold-infused metal heightens anticipation for what lies beneath Oak Island's surface. Meanwhile, at Lot 32, Gary Drayton and Michael John set off on their own exploration. Fueled by the prospect of uncovering historical secrets, their excitement grows as they unearth relics that may shed light on the island's past, including a significant spike and a lead cargo bag seal. As they piece together the puzzle of Oak Island's history, each discovery becomes a crucial piece of the narrative, drawing them closer to unraveling the island's well-guarded secrets. The recent discovery of a coin, reminiscent of 17th century British coins found years earlier, adds to the historical tapestry of Oak Island, hinting at connections to covert activities and hidden treasures. The team's geophysical surveys, conducted three weeks prior, aim to validate the authenticity of a 14th century map attributed to the Knights Templar a priceless artifact donated by the late researcher, Zena Halpern. The preliminary survey data revealed a significant subsurface metal anomaly near Lot 4, known as the Hole Under the Hatch. As Gary and Michael approached the marked area, their anticipation grew. The discovery of a two-way repeating signal heightened the suspense, leading to the recovery of a chunk of lead. Gary's excitement hinted at the significance of the find, especially when compared to other medieval lead pieces previously unearthed on the island, the team explored the inconsistencies surrounding the lead artifact discovered on Lot 22, questioning whether it was merely a remnant from a 19th century farmer or a crucial piece of evidence. Gary's exploration of the area revealed promising targets, including a metal strap reminding us of a cartwheel, suggesting probable shipment transport in the island's past. Meanwhile, at the swamp, Marty Legina and his team set off on an excavation mission to validate Fred Nolan's theory and potentially uncover valuable objects buried beneath the mud. As Billy operated the long-range excavator and Marty cleared water from the area, Gary stood ready with his metal detector to search for any metal hints or jewels among the spoils. Gary Drayton will scan the spoils for any potential metal clues or valuables. The crew encountered a probable oak tree stump in the swamp's southern section, which Rick Legina believed provided evidence of the swamp's artificial origin. Aligning with Fred Nolan's beliefs, the stump's agent potential story added to the mystery surrounding the swamp's evolution over time. At Lot 4, Rick and Gary searched for features confirming the theory of the hole under the hatch, expecting to find coins in the area depicted on the 14th century map. The recent finds, including a metallic anomaly, a leather strap, and a gold-plated button, underscored the significance of the team's ongoing exploration and its potential to unveil Oak Island's hidden secrets. The crew faced challenges due to new restrictions imposed by the Department of Communities, Culture, Tourism, and Heritage which demanded additional evidence before granting a permit for a large-scale dig. Emphasizing the need for substantial proof to support the map's value, Gary's continued metal detecting led to the discovery of a large antique iron spike, sparking curiosity about its function and prompting plans for further analysis, including XRF analysis, cleaning, conservation, and consultation with Carmen Lake. A two-way repeating signal led to another significant discovery, possibly an advertising tool with historical implications for shipbuilding and woodwork. All right, another good two-way repeatable signal. Could it be a coin? It's a coin, mate. It's a coin. Yes, look at that. Oh my gosh. The day's finds, including the iron spike and potential ad tool, generated excitement for future research and analysis. Steve Guptill. Laird Niven, Gary Drayton, Jack Begley, and Doug Crowell gathered on Lot 4, where magnetometer hits and Zena Halpern's map indicated 
potential targets associated with the hatch. CSR Geo Surveys, Limited's magnetic scan revealed defects along the road corresponding to the likely hatch position, underscoring the importance of locating it to validate Zena Halpern's research. Gary's determination to uncover the hatch or a potential vault loaded with wealth became a critical focus as the team navigated difficult terrain and encountered mysterious discoveries. At Lot 4, Jack and Gary uncovered a stump and a scratchy signal, leading to the discovery of an ancient buckle attached to a leather strap. Laird's examination of the find highlighted a significant sin, suggesting human presence prior to the well-known history of the 1700s. The leather strap and buckle sparked discussions about possible applications and implications for the island's mystery. As the rain-soaked landscape set the stage for their hunt, Jack and Gary's discoveries added depth to the island's narrative, promising to unveil its mysteries further. In the war room, Matt Sant's new insights regarding the 14th century map sparked excitement and led the team to reassess their approach, reigniting their determination to solve Oak Island's questions. The team declares their collective willingness to explore Lot 4 emphasizing their determination to conduct thorough research in the designated region. The war room discussion becomes a crucial moment, laying the groundwork for an upcoming expedition fueled by Matt's insights and the team's unwavering commitment. As they prepare to delve into the wild expanses of Lot 4, the Oak Island team remains united in their quest for answers and the elusive legendary wealth that has evaded discovery for generations. Meanwhile, Excitement mounts as the Legina brothers, accompanied by partner Craig Tester and their dedicated staff, initiate a precisely planned strategic drilling operation in the Money Pit area. Speculation about the metal identified in D2 leads scientists to conduct testing using XRF technology, revealing an unexpected discovery, an incredibly high amount of gold, exceeding 700 parts per million. Additionally, Recent wood discovery in borehole D2, carbon dated to as early as 1488, alongside a peculiar metal object, piques the team's curiosity. Drive Ian Spooner's subsequent elemental investigation, employing an X ray fluorescence instrument, yields a shocking revelation. The metal contains gold. This unforeseen turn intensifies curiosity about the potential value of the discovered item. The crew shifts its focus to the C1 cluster, which exhibits increased quantities of silver and gold. According to recent water testing, the discovery of gold on steel in the C1 cluster ignites excitement, indicating a promising area for further study. As the team deliberates on their options, discussions arise regarding the significance of locating tunnels in this region, especially considering a previous drill into a suspected tunnel at approximately 90 feet borehole before emerges as a crucial objective, with the team realizing the importance of uncovering wealth, or, alternatively, a crucial tunnel leading closer to the coveted reward. The recent discoveries on Oak Island, coupled with the insights gained from their visit to Quinta de Regalera, have provided Rick Legina and his team with a wealth of new information and perspectives on the island's mysteries. At the Military Museum in Lisbon, the team's meeting with Portuguese military historians shed light on the possible connections between artifacts found on Oak Island and Portuguese military history. The discovery of stone bullets, matching those used in ancient firearms, sparked further investigation into their origins, with evidence suggesting a link to the Azores Islands. This newfound information has added layers to the team's understanding of Oak Island's history and its potential ties to other countries. Upon exploring Quinta de Regalera, the team was struck by the delicate symbolism and design of the initiation well, which bears similarities to the money pit on Oak Island. The presence of Masonic symbolism at Quinta de Regalera further deepened their interest, leading them to consider the possibility of Templar or Masonic involvement in Oak Island's history. The discovery of similarities between the initiation well and the money pit has sparked a fresh perspective on the Oak Island mystery, leading the team to explore potential connections between the two locations. The presence of nine platforms at the initiation well aligns with the reported nine levels of the original money pit, further fueling speculation 
about a shared history. The mysteries of Oak Island and Quintadilla Reguilera promise to be both challenging and rewarding as the team delves deeper into their shared history and symbolism. The discovery of similarities between the initiation well at Quintadilla Reguilera and the money pit on Oak Island opens up a new avenue of investigation. For Rick Legina and his team, the striking resemblance in design and layout between these two structures raises interesting questions about a potential connection. The idea that the creators of the initiation well might have been aware of the Oak Island money pit and attempted to imitate its design is a fascinating possibility. The fact that the initiation well predates the Restall's discovery of mysterious holes in the money pit by more than six decades adds to the mystery. Could there have been a deliberate effort to replicate the money pit's layout and symbolism at Quinta de Rigue Lira? As the crew explores the tunnels around the initiation well, they are struck by the profound symbolism and purpose behind its construction. It becomes evident that the well served as more than just a functional structure. It was a reflection of Templar and possibly Masonic ideals, determined to uncover the truth. The crew diligently documents their discoveries and prepares for further research. Rick Legina and his team set off on a significant journey to Povoa de Langeso, Portugal, guided by the expertise of Joe A. Tilda Pound Ofiandero, a specialist on the Knights Templar, their mission initiated by researcher Korjan Mal's belief in potential connections between the Knights Templar and recent findings on Oak Island, aims to uncover clues that may shed light on the island's mysteries. Their investigation begins at the ancient church of Font Arcata, which holds historical significance as a Templar property. Dating back to 1126, Lady Teresa's donation of Font Arcata to the Templars underscores the church's importance and its potential relevance to Oak Island. As they explore the church and its surroundings, Rick and his team are captivated by the rich history and the implications of Lady Teresa's involvement with the Templars. The team's arrival in Portugal marks a crucial step in their quest for answers regarding Oak Island's mysterious past. They are optimistic that their exploration of these historical sites will yield valuable insights and bring them closer to unraveling the island's secrets. Exploring the history of the Knights Templar in Portugal, the team learns of King Afonso I's invitation to the order in 1126, offering them land and wealth in exchange for their military assistance. This historical context raises the possibility that valuable artifacts, possibly including those found on Oak Island, may be linked to the Templars' activities. Rick Legina emphasizes the importance of studying the symbolism within churches of the Templar period, believing that such symbols hold clues to the Order's beliefs and actions. As the team searches for symbols within the Church of Font Arcata, they are struck by the diversity of markings on the walls, prompting them to investigate potential Masonic connections to Oak Island. Their exploration of these symbolic elements represents a crucial step in their investigation, as they seek to uncover hidden meanings that may unlock the mysteries surrounding Oak Island's history and the potential involvement of the Knights Templar and Masonic influences. The team understands the significance of even the smallest clues or symbols, recognizing that they may lead them to the answers they seek. They carefully investigate each sign searching for patterns or hidden meanings that could illuminate the Templars' actions in Portugal and their potential connections to Oak Island. Of particular interest are symbols used by the Templars to convey secrets or denote significant sites. Rick emphasizes the importance of decoding Templar symbols, believing that they hold key information about the Order's beliefs, rituals, and potential links to Oak Island. The team's thorough examination of the Church's symbols underscores their dedication to uncovering the truth about the Templars' presence in Portugal and their involvement in the Oak Island mystery. A significant discovery is made when a symbol found on the walls of the 12th century Templar church matches one supposedly engraved on the mythical 90-foot stone. This finding raises suspicions of a possible connection between the carver of the 90-foot stone and the Knights Templar of Portugal. The team recognizes the potential wealth of information that such symbols may provide about the Templars and their activities. Further investigation focuses on Mason's markings, particularly those on the 90-foot stone. The discovery of similar symbols in the Templar chapel adds another layer to their inquiry. 
leading them to explore the meanings of these symbols and their potential relevance to Oak Island. The team's journey takes them to Tomar, the Templar Knights' capital in Portugal, where they uncover additional symbols and historical ties to the Templars. They draw parallels between symbols found in Portugal and those on Oak Island suggesting a direct link between the two locations. As they delve deeper into the Templars' history and their potential connection to Oak Island, the team remains alert in their search for any clues or evidence that may shed light on the mysteries surrounding the Templars' actions and their impact on Oak Island's history. The next day, metal detection expert Gary Drayton and treasure hunter Michael John arrive at Lot 8 on Oak Island's western drum line, interested in the numerous potentially significant discoveries in the area. Recent findings in Lot 8, including a large metallic artifact detected underground, a mystery stone paved feature, and a significant boulder, suggest past human activity in the region. Additionally, the discovery of a semi-precious garnet gemstone adds to the mystery and hints at the possibility of valuable artifacts buried beneath the surface. While awaiting a government permit for large-scale excavation, Drayton and John work to find evidence supporting Scott Clark's theory about a gemstone linked to the Knights Templar and the Ark of the Covenant. Their search leads them to discover an ancient oval chain, which Gary suggests may have been used to bind a large chest or box, possibly connected to the massive metallic artifact identified by ground penetrating radar. The discovery of the ancient chain underscores the importance of thorough investigation and attention to detail in unraveling Oak Island's mysteries. Every find, regardless of size, has the potential to shed light on the island's history and the existence of valuable artifacts. Meanwhile, the team continues to dig the TF1 shaft in the Money Pit location, now 107 feet deep, hoping for a significant discovery. During the excavation, Gary and another team member uncover a small, ordinary, wooden peg. Gary speculates that this artifact may have played a crucial role in the construction of the ancient money pit, suggesting a connection to a wooden structure discovered earlier in the year, dating back to 1488. Rick Lagina notes that the earlier structures found on the island were built with dowels, similar to the one recently discovered suggesting a connection to early depositional activities. Further exploration leads to the discovery of a massive, ancient fastener, buried underground, made of iron and hand-forged according to historical artifacts specialist Laird Niven. This artifact may predate the discovery of the money pit in 1795, hinting at earlier operations to bury treasures deep down. Marty Legina emphasizes the importance of the FDR expedition which aims to explore the depths of the original money pit. The team believes that the area between 107 and 150 feet, where they may find a vault, holds significant potential for future investigation. Meanwhile, Marty and Gary Drayden continue their research on Lot 8, where earlier discoveries have piqued their interest. The recent clearing of the area reveals potential hints or findings previously hidden from view exhibiting the team's dedication to uncovering the island's mysteries. During their exploration, Marty and Gary unearth a large lump of iron, a peculiar iron chain resembling a horse's bridle. This finding, along with previous discoveries of horse-related artifacts and old equipment, suggests a rich past on Oak Island waiting to be discovered. Speculation arises regarding the purpose of the iron tool with Gary proposing it may be an ancient cutting tool used in nautical activities or construction. The team's curiosity is further fueled as they contemplate the significance of these artifacts and their potential connection to buried items or structures in the region. As they prepare to secure permission for further excavation, the team consults with specialists to gain deeper insights into their findings. The similarities between Oak Island's money pit and the initiation well at Quintada regale a prompt additional study, shedding light on possible duplications and deeper meanings. As they continue their exploration, each discovery adds to the speculation and excitement surrounding Oak Island, driving the team's determination to uncover its long-held mysteries.